I am so happy, Brian. Do you know why? Um, I don't know why. Why? What's what's bringing you great joy today, Cassia? It's it's always a good day to be happy. On a side note, but what what's making you happy today? Today, July fifteenth, is the twentieth anniversary of Kotor. The game came mm. out twenty years ago today, and honestly, when I think of Star Wars, I think of May. Uh, even though, like Disney, pretty much all of them, except for one have come out like you know in december but i thought we totally missed True. the anniversary i'm like what kind of fans are we like that we totally just forgot about it in may but then i realized july 15th that is the 20th anniversary of kotor that's right yeah so that makes that makes us happy for sure 20th anniversary congratulations to kotor um on the other hand it makes me uh not really sad but uh, uh i'm thinking back that 20 years was a long time time ago so that was that was much younger uh the first time i was playing knights of the old republic but but yeah happy 20th anniversary to our favoritist uh star wars game out there for sure um we wanted to come on and chat about it and some memories and you know wax poetic about knights of the old republic for a little bit we actually we we talked about doing something like this before and we're like oh we have until you know july 15th to sort that out and then uh this morning it both it dawned on you that it was july the 15th uh just uh very shortly so uh yeah uh getting this getting this put together and uh but you know it's it's still an exciting time and excited to be chatting some more kotor goodness yeah so i looked up anniversary medals because that's something that you know people do and apparently this is the platinum anniversary and i'm sure that kotor is sold like it's one of the greatest hits of the original xbox and i'm sure it was remastered at some point for like or not remastered but like re-released for like xbox 360s and all that Mm -hmm. jazz so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're talk we're talking the original, the OG release, July fifteenth, two thousand and three, uh, straight to your Xbox, the original Xbox, with that massive, obnoxious controller that you had to play <laughs> Kotor uh, two on. Yeah. So uh, if if you think playing it on the Switch is bad, or you think trying to play it on your phone is bad, it's not. That is easy breezy compared to playing it on uh, the good old Xbox controller uh, for sure. But uh, I mean, Kotor was was a huge deal. Um, to me, Cassia, you know, we've we've talked a little bit about our Kotor origin stories, you know, off and on throughout the course of the the podcast. But um, that was the only reason that I bought an Xbox was just so I could get Knights of the Old Republic because I'm not a I'm not a Halo fan. I'm not I'm not into those kinds of games. But there was this new Star Wars game on the horizon uh, that was only coming to Xbox, so I had to get one, and that's that's the only reason I got it. Oh wow, that is that is something. Um... It's funny because I was also like a little horrified. I'm like 20 years ago, I I was on a school bus and my friend told me in the back of the bus. And the funny thing is I can remember where we were stopped in the bus and which friend uh, it was that told me about KOTOR. He's like, oh, there's this really cool uh, video game coming out. Like he knew like I... I I was kind of into all things Star Wars, you know, and Mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, like, it's so cool. Like, there's all these different kinds of armor. You can travel wherever. You can, like, have a lightsaber, different colors, you know, all that. And he's like, it has an interesting spoiler. Like, do you want to hear it? And I was like, oh, I'm probably never going to play it, so just tell me. And that's probably one of the first things that I learned about KOTOR and... It's kind of hilarious, uh, but maybe touching in a way that here here we are 20 years later still talking about KOTOR. Because uh, I, I was kind of like, in my spare time, I was kind of writing down a list of like what inspired me. Um, and it's, it's more than a page long. You know, it was kind of mm-hmm. in response uh, to the episode, I believe, 183 that we did with Schrader uh, when one of his mentors talked about, like, uh, pay attention to the things you like and why you like them. And I, I put down some things like nice smelling candles and wood, engravings, you know, nature and uh, mythology, Joseph Campbell, lots of other things, but... Honestly, like, 
Star Wars inspires me. The prequel trilogy, the original trilogy inspires me. The Last Jedi inspires me. And I honestly put down KOTOR as well. So uh, it's just... uh, Star Wars taps into mythology, uh, sci-fi fairy tales, and KOTOR is like uh, a great branch off of that you know star wars tree and it inspires me and i'm glad that we get to talk about it together yeah absolutely i mean it it is definitely very inspiring and certainly um you know here on the podcast we've done what now i think we just uh published episode number 184 i think um yesterday so you know to to talk about you know knights of the old republic for you know, for you know we don't we don't cover it every week but you know 184 weeks that's that's a long time so clearly you know there is something very um you know very rich you know both in and kind of the story but but you know it, it's beyond just that um i think for for both of us right i mean you know cuz obviously you know there's star wars and there's other you know ip and other books and things that we get a lot out of story wise but there's something just that is so resonant about the story and the characters and these worlds uh, within Knights of the Old Republic that that really kind of inspired us and moved us to you know want to talk about it you know, at length uh, at times uh, you know when going through through the stories and the and the characters and and all that stuff. So I think that it is it's really neat that this piece of media you know that came out uh, twenty years ago um, you know really inspired us to do all of that stuff you know. All, all the way, you know, two decades later, I think that 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 is really neat, and it it says a lot about um, the story that they were able to tell and kind of the the feeling um, that they were able to create within the game. Yeah, and I mean, remembering the Alex Kane boss fights book, uh, the Knights of the Old Republic, like it, all the creators, like. You know, like from Bioware, Lucasfilm, they were so passionate about that story, about that game. They tried new things, and uh, they still hold it. it. The game still holds up. Like twenty years later, um, it'd be cool to get a remake or remaster. Maybe that will happen. You know, twenty plus years later, but um, they're so proud of it, and they're like, "Yeah, I probably worked way too hard on that, and uh, did all these things like." put in extra work, but I loved it so much. Like, they're like, I probably wouldn't do that now, but I'm so glad I did that then. And um, that's kind of, I don't know, like, I think, like, in some ways, like, am I, are we obsessed with Star Wars? You know, like, maybe a little too much. Like, for me, I can say probably I've thought about it too much at at points in my life. (laughs) But um, what I try to do is, like, uh, talk about things I like and make it interesting, hopefully, for other people, you know? And uh, the reason I talk about it, personally, is, like, I think it it's worth talking about and, like, it can get people thinking and, like, uh, hopefully it can help other people as they create uh, their own things, you know? I wish I knew a better word than things, you know? I should have... <laughs> Should have looked up things synonyms, but I didn't. But um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we have to have to uh, break out the thesaurus for sure uh, when we talk about <laughs> stuff like this. But um, but yeah, not o- not only that, just in you know, just kind of in this inspiration piece, you know, to the people that made it, and um, you know, to to ourselves. But um, it's really neat for for me to sit back and think, Cassia. You know, I've been on the podcast now for about 120 ish out of the episodes. Um, and you know, just, just this game that, like I had said, you know, caused me to go out and buy, buy an Xbox, right? I was in, uh, Toledo, Ohio, sitting in my apartment playing KOTOR on this, on this Xbox. Um, and now, you know, all these things have happened because of the game and the way that I felt about it, right? Like, like you and I met, uh, we met, you know, kind of, kind of through the podcast and our mutual love and, you know, (laughs) understanding or tried trying this to understand Knights of the Old Republic. Um, you know, we've had some amazing guests on, we've had, you know, Christopher Vogler, we've had Unreal Cinema. Yeah, we've had we've had Unreal Cinema on. We've had uh, Alex Kane um, on, who had written that book that you had sent me back when I very first uh, started talking about the podcast. And 
um, or when I very first joined onto the podcast and you sent me a copy of that book with a note that said, uh, you know, hopefully we can have Alex Kane onto the podcast someday um, in it when you sent it to me. And, you know, we had him on the podcast and then, you know, all the other guests and, you know, now that I would consider uh, to be friends who have been on the podcast, you know, it's this it's this whole like network of of people that we have found and met and, you know, conversed with and, you know, became friends with because of our love of this 20 year old star Wars story. And I think that that is really kind of the neatest thing for me. Yeah. Like, because I was able to meet, uh, those friends, you know, uh, who are much more talented than me. I was able to be like, what if I took this idea I had inspired by KOTOR, you know, like kind of like a fan fiction thing and make it into an audio drama. That's how that evolved, you know, uh, is because we're friends and we like creating things with each other. And that wouldn't have been able to happen without uh, this podcast, without you and uh, without our very talented friends who deserve, you know, a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um Absolutely. And that's that's kind of what the celebration is about. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, it turns 20 years old. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see, um, you know, kind of what the status of the, the remake or remaster is. Um, I'm still very hopeful that um, we're going to be, you know, getting that in some form in the future. But I, KOTOR is a, a story that's lived on. I mean, it's been in tons of formats now. If you weren't lucky enough to play it on the original Xbox, uh, you know, it eventually went to, to PC. And then uh, you can get it, I think, on basically all of the iterations of the Xbox. Uh, it's available on the Switch. You can play it on your phone. Uh, you can play it uh, on your new modern PC on you know steam or whatever um so i mean it, it still has this this long lengthy life of and one of my favorite things is i'm you know, you'd mentioned cassia that maybe we're a little bit too much into star wars and as i'm sitting up in uh, my little uh, office theater uh, space here surrounded by an obnoxious amount of star wars stuff whenever <laughs> i bring people up into this room because uh, everyone wants to come see it uh they immediately see like the darth revan bobblehead um and they're like who is that and then i can tell them about this game that they should go and play so um you know it's it's still introducing it to people and these characters and and how rich they are uh that reminds me back to um one of my favorite episodes we did with uh force time pod uh we were kind of doing a q a with him about uh you know the last jedi and knights of the old republic and just talking uh, you know, kind of through the story and about the characters with people that, that don't know about it, that are, you know, still learning about it, you know, 20 years on is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, that's why I like doing the pod is uh, hopefully so more people can discover the story. Like, maybe it's a little too hard for them to play the game now, even though it uh, there are some different formats to try if, like, you don't want to revivify uh, ye old Xbox, you know. Uh, you don't want to get stuck on that Rancor going through Terrace. That's what you yeah. don't want to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like we have like 180-ish episodes. Like, uh, not all of them are about KOTOR. Not all of them are about Star Wars. But uh, I think we try to at least like bring it up. Like, even if we're talking about Spider-Man, we're like, how does this relate to KOTOR? <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, sharing that story. But what I'm curious about is what do you love about KOTOR? Um, so for me, kind of kind of what made me fall in love with KOTOR in the first place was that it was ju it was just this Star Wars RPG. Um, it came out in you know 2003, and it, at that time, I mean, we'd had, you know, kind of the prequels had come out, but I was always a big fan of the Star Wars video games and kind of, you know, the Star Wars books and things. Um, but being kind of you know, born when I was like, I didn't have really like star Wars that I could, um, necessarily like latch on to. Like I've always loved the original trilogy, but I was born, you know, kind of too late to really kind of take those in until, you know, a couple years after the fact. So, um, when I got into something like Knights of the Old Republic, it was really this, the star Wars world that I could, you know, go and explore and live in and, uh, talk to people in. And, and that was pretty amazing. I think that's probably why I, you know, really kind of fell in love so fast with like uh, galaxy's edge um and that kind of stuff too because it was really just you know as someone who loved star wars you know al almost beyond all else and growing up in this you know small town in ohio where i was from and i didn't have kind of that uh, star wars outlet that we have now you know with you know social media and uh, discord and the podcast and stuff like that it was it was a way for me to to interact in that world 
Um, and I, I think for me, that was, that was the biggest part of it. Um, you know, obviously the story is great and the characters are great and, you know, we, we can talk at, at length about, you know, how amazing, you know, Bastila's story is and, uh, how she is the real hero of, uh, Knights of the Old Republic for sure. But, but for me, I think what initially made me fall in love with it was just, you know, that it was this Star Wars world that I could go in and explore, uh, kind of on my own. And I always thought that that was really neat. Um, but, uh, but what about you? What was, what was kind of your first thing? What was the thing that hooked you onto KOTOR? I think it was so cool to me, um, that it wasn't just like a movie tie-in game, you know? It was a new Star Wars story in a new, pretty much untouched setting, it was far enough removed uh, from the KOTOR comics to be its own thing, and you can make all these choices. There were all these different characters, and it was written really well, you know? And uh, kind of back in the day, like, video games didn't always have the best writing. Like, now it's kind of, like, done like a... Okay, thinking about math, I think it's a 180. <laughs> yeah, 180. Uh, so, like, that's... It, Video games are some of, like, the best stories coming out nowadays, but, like, 20 years mm -hmm. ago, like, not so much, but it felt like a real Star Wars story, and the archetypes and character types were familiar, kind of built into that uh, Star Wars formula, Hero's Journey kind of formula, so it was similar, but it was different, and... I thought that was so cool. It, it, the poster just was so cool. It looked different. Like, uh, even though Bastila kind of looked like, you know, Amidala and Princess Leia and HK and T3 looked like C3PO mm -hmm. and R2, they were different. And it was like, Jaw Guy, is he the hero or the villain? And it's like, <laughs> he's the villain. And like, you're probably looking back on it and it's like, it's funny that I gave Jaw Guy, like, as much of like a I don't know like now I'm kind of just like jaw stupid but it it kind of like drew me in the poster I was like ooh, there's a mystery there um but mm -hmm. yeah I just love these characters and uh especially Karth and Bastila and I think like with um hindsight like and like doing this pod like I think it is a great message you know like even though the non-canonical canonical story you know that could be canonical someday you know like it's kind of like you see it's kind of like a fairy tale it's like you kind of have like the one of the most evil people like become good again and save someone from their mistakes like i love that i love hope you know like mm -hmm. um counsel rather than cancel you know kind of like the messages and theses theses sounds weird but i'll just say the thesis of kotor 1 and talking about the thesis of kotor 2 even though kotor 2 is maybe like an anniversary for next year but uh yeah like it just gets me interested in stories and reignites like hope for me yeah absolutely and and that brings up a really good uh kind of kind of point that i was you know as you were talking there it kind of kind of drew my mind to is as you mentioned mentioned that uh knights of the republic is kind of like this mythological uh tale you know it's it's very much like um you know kind of like kind of like this uh kind of like this like this fantasy story within uh star wars and i i think that that is something that's neat about this um you know we you know as star wars fans you know is, is it canon is it not canon is it part of the you know expanded universe and a lot of the expanded universe takes place within and around you know the the skywalker story right so that gets a little muddier but but something like this um i think you could really look at it doesn't really matter um if it's canon or not um It'll be neat, you know, obviously, and we've had, we have episodes where we prove that KOTOR is without a doubt, you know, like 400% <laughs> canon, um, but it, it almost doesn't matter if it's canon or not because it's so far in the past, like this could just be 
like a, a, a Star legend. Wars tale, right? Yeah, like li- a literal yeah. legend uh, within Star Wars. And I think that that is, that is pretty cool and uh, pretty cool, um, you know, kind of aspect of the story that you can take away as as you're playing it as, as more of this, uh, you know, kind of fairy tale uh, telling of these characters that we love so much. So um, I don't know. I think that that is pretty cool. Maybe... I wonder, you know, if humanity is still around in, like, a few hundred or a thousand years, like, whatever textbooks of the day are, will they, like, look back on Star Wars and be, like, kind of reminds me of the the prequels strike back, like, when they talk about Star Wars, if they do, will they just kind of talk about the original trilogy, will they talk about the prequels or the sequel trilogies, or... Mm-hmm. Will they even talk about the expanded universe? Like they'll be like, "What is the what is the Homeric, you know, canon or the <laughs> right. Lucasian canon?" You know, and it's like, will they even talk about Kotor and be like, "These were canon until Disney, uh, an obsolete <laughs> empire, um, uh, they will, bought them they will one say two, day." They'll say two things for sure. They'll say. Uh, why did everyone love Jar Jar so much and why did they put him on everything? They'll say that. <laughs> um, and they'll also say that whatever the last Star Wars was, was no good. <laughs> so those yeah. are the only two, those are the only two uh, guarantees um, in the, in the Star Wars world of the, of the future, I think. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll, it will be interesting. Uh, we're, we're going off, you know, into to future think about the whole of Star Wars, but it will be interesting to see uh, what, you know, what people think of Star Wars, even in, you know, 20 or, 30 years right will it be more uh, lumped together i think that a a lot of that's already happening right you're getting the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy are starting to be grouped together a little bit more um in the way that people talk and analyze and i think that that's just going to continue to go and then to that end to bring this back then what part is knights of the old republic going to going to play in that um for me certainly it's kind of like this capstone of the lucas arts um you know video game uh company which is you know, a, a company that I loved both for the Star Wars games and for the other uh, kind of original uh, adventure game stories that they that they told um, and try to play through as often as I can. But, you know, it seemed like Knights of the Old Republic was kind of kind of the, the pinnacle in what a Star Wars game uh, could potentially be. Um, there have, you know, obviously been other really great games even even back then. But, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like the like the the Renaissance period, I guess. You know, you look back at, you know, the the uh, famous art and you know all of the advancements that were that were made and uh things like that and that's kind of what i think about when i think about knights of the old republic yeah i have very i guess they're not mixed feelings about the rise of skywalker but they're just feelings that i don't really need to get into yet but i do remember a trailer for it and it said uh witness uh i'm not gonna get the wording exactly right but it's like witness the the end of the story of the skywalker saga and it's like stories are forever you know and that's how i feel about kotor i think like maybe younger cassie would be like no it has to be you know like this if it's canon and it needs to be canon but maybe it's just a story that i love and I like talking about it with you and we have uh, listeners like it doesn't need to go viral, you know, but we just Mm -hmm. enjoy talking and people enjoy listening and that's all it really needs to be, you know, and uh, I like that. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, it can be it can be the story that's that's personal to you. It can be a story that. you know, really is, you know, loved by a lot of people. It can be something that um, eventually is taken and turned into uh, Star Wars canon. But, you know, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that in 2003, uh, I went and bought a pre-owned Xbox from GameStop to play this game, right? It doesn't matter what happens to it after that, because that is my KOTOR story. And your KOTOR story is that you got it spoiled on the, on the school bus before you even played it. Yep. So... Whatever your Star Wars or KOTOR story is, uh, we uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And uh, I think there will be many great, you know, anniversaries in the future. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let us know down in the uh, comments or on our Discord or whatever, uh, kind of what your KOTOR memories are. And uh, maybe we're going to do something a little special. We're getting close to episode 200 and uh, we're going to be collecting some of those to, to go off into the future too. But yeah, let us know what you think uh, about KOTOR and on its 20th anniversary, what your uh, feelings are about it. So thanks so much for checking this one out. May the force be with you. May the force be with you.